Well, God bless you, saints of God. It is a joy to be with you this morning one more time in the name of Jesus. I thank and I praise God for all of you and for just taking the time out this morning to hear another word from the Lord. So I'm praying that uh, your week was a good week and that you're in good spirits and in good health. And most of all, that in the season that we're in, that you are staying safe. So we are praying for you, uh, that the Lord will keep you. I know that you're praying for me and I appreciate all of your prayers. So this week we wanna continue. We started out the year of speaking about the rock and how important it is to have Christ who is the rock uh, in our lives. He is a necessity, we need him with all the things that are going on, not only in the world, but even in our own personal lives that we need his stability in our life. We need that reassurance and that strength. So uh, we read uh, a couple of weeks ago from Matthew, and I'm gonna read that uh, scripture to you really quickly again before we go into the, the heart of our lesson. And that is found in St. Matthew 7, verse uh, 24. And he says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So I want to talk to you this morning about uh, the endurance, the strength of a rock. The rock is known for its endurance, yes. the ability that even though, uh, for example, a house can be uh, hit by a storm, it could be hit by a lot of strong winds and rains, but if it is uh, built upon a strong foundation uh, of the rock, that no matter the beating that it takes, uh, that it will still stand. Praise the Lord. So let's go this morning to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Amen. And the 13th verse. Matthew 24, verse 13. And let's start at the 11th verse. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Let's read that again. Verse 13. But he that shall endure, endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this is what we want to talk about this morning. We want to talk about endurance, endurance. So Jesus in this scripture is letting us know that the person who endures to the end, that person will be saved. So what does endure mean? Endurance means to have the ability to be able to last all the way up until the end. So if our salvation is resting or being saved is resting upon lasting until the end, it means what we have to do on our end is to build up our endurance because we're gonna go through a lot of things in this world and just like the house where it was beaten upon by the winds and the rains, but it still stood in order for us to endure or last to the end, despite all the other things that are going around, praise the Lord, that we have to build our endurance. We have to build our endurance to be able to last. So in sports, for example, if you take a boxer, a boxer could be a very skilled fighter but if that fighter is going into a match where there's 12 rounds and if that boxer can only let's say his peak or his level to his body gives out is 10 rounds mm -hmm. 
That means that if he is boxing an opponent who has the stamina and the endurance to go the stretch of 12 rounds, well, that boxer there that can only go to 10 rounds and his body's going to give out at that point, it means that the opponent is going to have an upper edge on him because he's going to be able to outlast him for two extra rounds. So what that boxer now has to do is when that boxer goes into training, he has to build his endurance up. Yes. Uh, so you'll find a boxer, because when I was small, I used to always wonder, well, if you're boxing, I thought it was just mostly skills with, with the fighting part. But I always wondered, well, why did a boxer have to jog in the morning? Or some boxers, you see them doing a lot of swimming or running. What that boxer is doing is they are building their endurance. So they're, they're running or they're swimming and they're, they're working on their, their cardio system, their heart and their lungs because the heart is supplying the, uh, the air or the oxygen to all the muscles to allow that boxer to go that extra, uh, extra round, extra two rounds. So they're running, they're swimming, they're jogging because now they're working on build, building their cardio system up. So it, it takes time and it's like a, you got to go past your peak. So if the peak it, for them is 10 rounds, so they have to consistently work on their cardio so they can push it to 11 uh, rounds. And it's going to be hard in the beginning, but once they keep pushing their cardio system and their heart, their heart is getting stronger. Their lungs is bringing in all the air that it needs to be able to supply the oxygen to their muscles. So now they went past the peak of the, the 10 rounds. So now they pushed it up now to 11 rounds. So now they consistently working out every day, jogging and swimming. So they now feel comfortable with the 11 round, uh, rounds. So now they have to push themselves again a little harder to get past the 11th round. So they have to push it now and work harder now to build it so that now they feel comfortable in the, the 12th round. So once they have moved there, now they're able to go the distance with the, with the 12 rounds. The same with a, a runner. If you're running, a, 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 let's say, a, a race that's only, uh, let's say, three miles, but that runner is only able to do two miles, well, they still have to work on building themselves up to a level where they are, are strong enough to fulfill the whole three miles of, of the race. So it takes sticking with it, and it takes building the cardio system to be able to ha have the oxygen come into the body, it, it goes to the muscles, and then you're able to uh, endure and to last. Mm -hmm. So personally for me, uh, when I first started working in, in Manhattan, uh, prior to that, I, my, most of my jobs were out on Long Island. So physically, I was very inactive because I, I mostly just uh, drove to work. So physically, it made me really out of shape. So by the time last year when I started working in, in Manhattan, I would, you know, with Manhattan, it's a lot of hustling involved, a lot of the running from one train to another, going upstairs. And I could feel myself just physically just getting uh, worn out. I went to the peak of where I could go, and then I was just exhausted. But what I did was in July, I accidentally got off a wrong stop. So in order for me to get to work, I walked uh, 20 blocks. Now, it was rough at first. But when I walked the 20, I got there huffing and, and puffing and, and sweaty, but I did it consistently. And by at least the third month, I found myself able to go up the stairs e easily. I found out that when I was walking, um, I didn't get tired like I did when I first started. What happened was I was building my stamina and in terms it was building my endurance where my heart was being strengthened and the flow of oxygen was going in. So it was easy for me now to make that 20 block walk and not be exhausted in between or having to, uh, to uh, get extremely tired where I couldn't go on. So spiritually, it's the same for you and, and us. 
that in order for us to go on in this life or in this world, and we're going to have a lot of problems and things that's going to come up on us, and we find that in our life that we may have a peak point where we may feel that that's our cutoff point. We may feel like maybe, for example, Tom at work is annoying, or I may have a, 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 a annoying relative, an annoying brother or a, a sister that just, they get on my nerves. And you say, well, how do you know? Well, if you're talking about them all the time, it means they are getting on your nerves. So that means you have a point there that's the peak of where you have your limitations with them. Yeah, you, can, you may even have like a bad temper. So when something that has reached that, mm -hmm. then you're, you'll, you'll explode. So what we have to do as saints of God is just naturally how the boxer or the runner gets to their, they know their peak point where they had enough and their body physically can't go on. They work on it to be able to develop it so you can go a little bit more and go a little bit more and then go a little bit more. And then you find yourself doing it and not realizing that those things that used to bother you, you find that they're not bothering you because what happened, you, you, the Lord gave you strength. He strengthened you, yes, yes, thank you and he gave you the ability. You, you put in the work. And God supplied the strength and the power. So in Psalms 31, Psalms 31 and verse 24, and it reads, Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will what strengthen your heart. So just like the runner has the courage to press in to their limitation, their heart is being strengthened. Where now they're able to do 11 rounds, now they're able to do 12 rounds. So in the case with us as saints of God, we have to press in sometimes. Amen. And God says, if you show courage, now courage don't always mean that you're fighting. Mm -hmm. Courage could also mean when you're not fighting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It takes a lot of courage to be nonviolent. That takes a lot of courage to hold your peace. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of courage to when you should argue, that you refrain from arguing. That, that takes a lot of courage. And if you show the courage in these, uh, these inc incidents that may uh, come up in your life, that God says, now, I will strengthen your heart. So Bob has annoying habits. You press in and you say, well, I, will, I won't allow that to get to me or they don't say good morning uh, when I say it. I will not let that get to me. I know that they can be stubborn, but I will not let their stubbornness get to me. You press in, you find scriptures that, that gives you strength in that area of your life so you're able to keep your peace. And you show that courage in that, God says in turn, I will strengthen your heart and when your heart is strengthened, it supplies everything you need so you can go on. You could go on in peace. You could go on in love. You won't let things uh, get to you. You won't let people get to you. You won't let annoying habits get to you. You won't always be in a place of always conflict that you'll be in a place of peace because he said he'll strengthen your heart. Just like naturally so, the boxer's heart is being strengthened where he now is building his stamina and supplying the oxygen that he can go on. Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord, he too strengthens our heart, where in turn it allow us as well to go on, where we won't let these things that, that would annoy us, they don't bother us. See, now here's the thing with a boxer or a runner. The boxer, his end point will be the 12 rounds. There is no 13 or 14. 
his end point he knows is that. The runner, they know that, let's say, if they're running a race for three miles, they know that three miles is it. That's the finishing point. But us as saints of God, we don't know the finishing point. He said, he who endures to the end. So your end may be five years from now. My end may be a year or, or uh, two years. Your, your end, somebody else's end may be, they may have 10 more years here. So whatever your end is, that God constantly has to renew the strength. See, with a boxer, he knows that his limit was 12 rounds, so he worked himself up to 12 rounds. That was his peak point. That was when his body after that will give out. So he worked it to the peak of 12, 12 rounds. For us, there is no, we're working it for a year, or we're working it for six months. We, we, we'd probably be here, who knows, a long time. We could be here for 10 more years. So what do we do? So we have to constantly get our strength from the Lord. He constantly has to renew our strength. Amen. And in turn, when he renews our strength and he is strengthening our hearts, it is giving us now the ability to be able to go on and not get weary or we lose ground and we get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We always have to look to the Lord for that. So let's read the last uh, portion of scripture. And that's in Isaiah. Isaiah 40. And verse 29, he give power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. <laughs> so what God is speaking here about, he's speaking about endurance. Walk and not faint, that has nothing to do with your skill, that has to do with endurance. Run and not be weary, that has nothing to do with your skill. It has everything to do with enduring. Now, young people are known for their strength. Young people are known for their vitality, their stamina, that they can, they can go the extra mile, extra two miles. They don't have a lot of body uh, uh, fat on their frame that slows them down, that makes them sluggish or tired. They're very lean because they're very active. They're able to eat fast foods and burn it off quickly because they have a really high, metabol uh, high metabolism. So, the, so young people have the strength to go on. They have that endurance. But God is talking here in the spirit. He's comparing what he does to someone who we know is strong and have a lot of stamina. And God says, if you wait on me, pray and just be patient. He says that he'll strengthen us. And that's what we need. He'll renew it. So you don't renew something if something wasn't there before and it's gone now. So when we're going through life with problems and difficult people and stresses and anxieties and money problems and people issues and family problems and marital problems and problems with the children, all those things are draining physically, mentally, emotionally. Praise the Lord. But God, it comes into play because he now says that he'll come in and renew that strength. He'll replenish it. He'll strengthen our hearts. He'll give us the ability to have empathy, to look at people differently. See, we have the, the, the plus of being a saint of God is we have the help that we uh, have in our life. Someone who doesn't know the Lord, they don't have that help. So they're low, they're frustrated, they may take their frustrations out on you. They could be snippy or, 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 or stubborn. They have that type of spirit and way. But when the Lord strengthens your heart, he'll give you love for that person. He'll give you empathy for that person and compassion mm -hmm. where you'll look at them differently. Mm -hmm. You won't look at what their deed that they're doing, but you'll look at them with a compassion that's there, knowing that, that it's the Lord in their life that's really missing. Mm -hmm. And that can't happen 
if your heart isn't strengthened enough to be able to see that. So that's why the Lord says, if you show the courage, stay in his word and be able to see these things, he does something to your heart. So now John at work, who does who doesn't say good morning, doesn't bother you anymore. Maybe this person who does that or says this snippy, it doesn't bother bother you uh, anymore. See, because once we've overcome Bob, there's gonna, there's thousands of Bobs in the world. And if we can't deal with that one, Bob, and we leave because of Bob, well, you're going to go across town to a new job and there's going to be another Bob there. But this time they're called Mary. <laughs> Same spirit. So we can't keep running from different places trying to avoid that spirit. We have, we have to press into it, stay in God's word, and God will give us the understanding that we need. And he strengthens our heart. And he gives us the ability to, to love on them, to pray for them. Praise the Lord. So remember the word for today that the Lord said, now this didn't come from man. This didn't come from a prophet. This came from Jesus himself. He says, they that endure to the end shall be saved. So if the Lord said it takes endurance, not skill, not how much you run the church or not how much you do this or do that or activities it's, it's, he didn't say those things. He, he's not talking about your skill now. He's talking about to be able to last to your end point. That person will be saved. So that's what we have to focus on. If that came from Jesus, we have to focus on enduring so that we won't get weary and fall by the wayside. Praise the Lord. So I thank and I praise God for his word today, and I pray that the word was a blessing to you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you for your word today. We thank you for being the rock in our life. You give us the stability that we need in our life, even when the world seems chaotic, it seems messy, it seems un unstable. You give us, Lord God, the stability in our life, and we want to say thank you today. Yeah. We thank you for being the rock in our life, and we praise you and we honor you just for being God. Hallelujah. Lord God, I'm praying for those who have heard this word today. I don't know what's going on in their life. You know what's going on. Maybe they're going through some problems, some difficulties, some problems in their marriage, some problems, Lord God, maybe financially even problems with their health. They're going back and forth to doctors and they just seem like they're not getting any answers. Maybe somebody just need a peace of mind. Somebody today may feel lonely. They may not have family or even friends in their life that they could connect with, Lord. So Father God, I'm praying for them right now that you would bless them, that you would let them realize that you love them, Lord God, that, that you came here and you died so that they can have peace in their life. They can have rest and stability. Father God, I'm praying for those. Somebody lost a loved one today. Someone's in bereavement right now. I'm asking you to, to touch them, Lord. Send a word of comfort to them and encourage them right now in your name, in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon this, this government, Lord. Have mercy upon this nation. Father God, there's so much that's going on here, so much chaos, so much turmoil and hate. Lord, where I'm asking you, Lord God, that you would touch hearts, touch minds. Break that spirit, Lord, of confusion. Break that spirit of hate, Lord, off of them in your name, in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for the new administration that's coming in, Lord, that you would bless them, give them wisdom to lead. We need that today, Lord. We need it in our homes we need that in our communities. We need that in our neighborhoods. We need it, Lord God. We need you, Lord. We need you in our life. So, Father God, we pray this prayer, Lord, in your name, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, God bless you. I thank God for you. And remember to walk in the victory of God and remember that the Lord is our rock. Hallelujah. So, stay encouraged. God bless you.